So good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Irene. I'm from Kenya uh, and also uh, one of the Image Africa team. We also have a few others who have joined us, Mohammed and Tony. Um, today we are going to be looking at effectively supporting online learning groups in e-learning systems, which will be presented to us by Dr. Geoffrey Mayende, the acting director at the Institute of Open, Distance and E-Learning at the College of Education and External Studies in Makerere University in Uganda. We are so delighted that he could make time to present um, to us. And I will let him tell us a bit more about him uh, so that we do not, um, we, we understand more about uh, his work. Just for housekeeping, we are recording the session. We are live streaming the session to YouTube. And we would kind of request you to have your um, mics muted when you're not speaking, but should you want to speak, then you can pick up your mic. Uh, we also encourage you to write your questions or any observations in the chat, and we can also engage um, with jo uh, Godfrey in the chat as well. So welcome, Godfrey. We are happy to have you. And um, over to you now. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know, Irene, do you want people to see my face? Pause. Hello. This is Godfrey Maende from Makerere University. I didn't get the bridge of all of Uganda to put at the back, but next time I'll try to put the Ugandan bridge at the back here. Okay. Um, so basically I, I, will, I will not keep my video on all throughout because I have multiple screens, which I'm using to display and they, they might be a possibility that I might be looking on the other screen and I don't appear right in the, in the camera. Uh, let me just share my, my screen, my screen, uh, so that we can be able to start process. I yes. Good afternoon, all of you, uh, or oh, good morning to those who are in the different locations of the the world. Uh, as uh, Irene has mentioned, I am uh, Godfrey Mayende from Kennedy University, and I'm going to be presenting uh, research work we have done about effectively supporting online learning groups for e-learning systems. Uh, of course, I up here I try to also recognize uh, Kennedy Image Africa for the opportunity, UIA, and then NORAD for which actually uh, funded the process of the work that we were able to, to do. And uh, this engagement will be a little bit interactive so that you can all be able to engage uh, on what, uh, what uh, is more interesting on online learning, on online groups. Uh, this work was done by a team. Uh, I hope you can hear me very well, okay. This work was done by a team, myself and the, the others. I just wanted uh, them to be recognized as well. Uh, and myself, uh, uh, Irene was saying I should add more information about myself. Uh, I am an e-learning consultant and I am working in the, in the Institute of Open Distance and e-learning. I, uh, I have been at uh, Cape Town, doing a postgraduate and diploma in the uh, area of uh, education, ICP, education, that's what I have, and, 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 and I have interacted with Tony, I think, before, several times, even when I was at uh, the University of Cape Town. Okay, that's uh, about me. Uh, we are going to start off the, the workshop with, the, with, first of all, getting to know some of your expectations, and I'm going to, because I said we are going to have a more engaging conversation. So here we are just going to have a mentee conversation and I wanted just to, to get a feel of uh, 
what are your expectations when you come to uh, this kind of workshop, which is the uh, uh, which is on supporting uh, online learning groups? Uh, I am. Uh, let me just put the 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 ment link in the in the chat. I think we are just going to go www.menti.com, but I am also going to just a minute. I'm going to put the code shortly. Uh, the code. Okay, let's put that. The code is six two five three four zero eight four. I have also put that in the chat so you can be able to just what are your expectations of this uh, workshop so that we can have a feel. As we have said, this is going to be more uh, more participatory. All of us are going to be involved in the conversation so that we get to. We are waiting because this is going to take a short time so that we can be able to move on. Okay, uh, I, if there's any problem with uh, using Menti, uh, for those who are not, uh, okay, this, yeah, if, you're, if your screen is, uh, is the overshadowed and you can't see, you can press escape if you're not familiar with Zoom, and then you can go to the browser, www.menti.com, and you put in the code as indicated, and then you'll be able to get to what, uh, write down some of this. Okay, somebody saying learn from your experiences. Uh, another saying the answers to all of the problems they teach online with groups, uh, to learn new approaches, to learn from your, your research. Okay. Uh, at least some four people have been able to, to give us some expectations, but we can, okay, more others are, are coming to broaden networks, to learn on the effective tools and measure that one ought to implement the online learning group. Yeah, basically we, we can see that the, the story or the string that is being shared is about learning uh, some experiences on how to use groups and trying to, show, uh, to see how the research was conducted and how the groups uh, can be able to work. And this is what we have been able to see coming out there. I'm not going to spend a lot of, uh, a lot of time there because we need to, to move to the next stuff, so you allow me go here. So in this workshop, I'm going to, but you can continue submitting in the in the main team because it's going to be running at the back in the background. So basically, we have a, a we. I'm going to give this workshop in or this webinar into these topics: introduction, uh, methodology, results, contributions, and some summary. And and in between there, we shall have some some activities which we are going to be doing. And basically, as I said, this is the research that was conducted. So we are going to be looking at how the research actually unfolded and how we did it. So with some problems and all this that we shall be able to see. Okay. Uh, so in the in the background here, we, we asked, because we are talking about online learning groups, so we needed to, we know that learning is the, the acquisition of knowledge or skills, actually or change of behavior through study or experience. So somebody can be able to acquire this knowledge through study or through experience. But when you, uh, collaborative learning actually even makes it much better. Uh, we have seen so many theories, uh, uh, behaviorist theory, uh, uh, cognitive and constructive theories, and we have seen that collaborative Learning is connected with knowledge construction, where people can be able to, to construct their own knowledge and learning through the ex experiencing the world. So, and we have also seen that Vygotsky in the, Vygotsky talks about that a person's learning may be enhanced through engagement with others. So, uh, people can learn through engagement with others, and this engagement must be intentional in a way so that you can try to make people engage in the conversation, uh, in the discussions. 
And the, this also is in line with what Anderson talks about. Anderson talks about that uh, we can achieve meaningful learning when we enhance either learner facilitator interactions, learner content interaction, or learner learner interaction. So if we enhance one, any one of those ones at a very higher level, then there are high chances that people can be able to learn. So all these are saying that we need to engage. Learners need to engage either with content, learners need to engage with fellow learners, or learners have to engage with the, with the, with the facilitator. Uh, he also talks about facilitator learner interactions, which brings about uh, meaningful learning as well. So basically, all these conversations are connected with how do we engage how do you engage uh, into either student-student interactions or content-student interaction or learner-facilitator interaction. And the, all these can be best achieved through what you call the learning groups. So if you want people to work together, then they will be able to engage and they will be able to interact. Uh, so learning groups can be can help in this particular scenario. And the, in our study, we were actually, our study was underpinned by the social constructivist learning theory. Of course, within constructivism, there is also what you call uh, cognitive constructivism, but we, we based our work more on the social constructivism learning theory. That's what underpinned our work. And in uh, and the problem of our work, uh, the problem to which we wanted to to solve, basically, comes from uh, we have two things, three things here. We have the online. We, uh, we have the learning, we have the groups that we are, where I have just put them into separate elements as we can. And the, we have already seen that uh, with even the emergence of COVID, uh, we are seeing that uh, online is basically uh, given it's now in the, we have put a green color on it, meaning that everyone is now yearning to go online because of the, it can create possibilities for distributed learners because when they are very far. And we have seen many people now coming and saying, okay, how do I do this effectively? Because we have all rushed into seeing how can we go online. So this shows the importance of online is actually now very clear and very important. So, and COVID has put us at a point where this online is actually, this is the time where it is actually highly even needed. Uh, but we have also seen that uh, Learning in groups, if this is not the first time we are, we are talking about learning in groups. People have been learning in groups, but many times people learning in groups in a physical environment or in small classrooms uh, setting, it has worked well and they're talking about it that if you want people to learn, then put them in groups and they put them in groups and people will be able to, to learn very well. So learning in groups is quite uh, something that has been talked about and show that they there's a lot of possibilities when people are learning in the group. But the only challenge that we sometimes have is uh, often when we, we try to do uh, learning uh, using online groups, the groups which are online, or sometimes I, I, I use the word online and distance interchangeably, but when you use the word online, online groups sometimes is often not, not working as you really have wanted. So they have shown us that, uh, and that is that was the basis of our, our our research and our problem domain that we were looking at here. And we, and in in a nutshell, the problem was that although learning groups can bring about meaningful learning, learning groups in online learning are often not uh, working quite well. And that was the, the problem that we we went ahead to start to work on and solve. So in order to solve this problem, we actually used. Uh, research directions. We came up with three research directions where we looked at the context, we looked at the processes, and we also looked at the tools. Under the processes, we, we, we had different research questions within the processes uh, where we have what is the context of online learning groups and what is, the, uh, what is an effective online learning group. That was giving us the context of what, uh, what is in, a, in the context area. And then we had some questions under the processes. How can effective online learning groups be formed? And how can effective online learning groups be sustained? So we were looking at the processes that happen within the learning groups as, as we have. 
And then uh, we also looked at the, what guides the design of tools to support effective online learning groups and what tools should be used to support effective online learning groups. So here it was, we were able to see that. And the, to answer these research questions, we used uh, some research directions and design science approach was the really is the is what we used uh, because it was within uh, within practice because we were using authentic courses courses that were running within Makerere University and also courses that were running at the University of Agda and others were actually more courses that were real time running and were able to do some evaluation with that so under the under the and here in the design science, we repurposed the design science diagram into this. We, we started by defining the objectives for a solution and we did some design and development or customizing or alignment. And then through there, we were able to see some methods that cropped up, some factors that came up or some tools that we'd be able to use. And this helped us to, to, to apply them within case studies of authentic, uh, authentic online courses, as we'll be seeing, and these uh, we were able to produce some data that was coming out, which we did some evaluation about the, what was going on, and then we were able to feed back into the define uh, the objectives and also give some feeds back to the to the to the design and development so that we can be able to improve on the system because this was iterative in nature, so we're able to do this iteratively. In the design science, so under and the, there were uh, under the methodology. I may not go through all the methodologies, but I I can just give a snapshot of of the case studies, an overview of the case studies that we have because uh, these uh, these studies actually are online. It can be read. Actually, I will give you the links uh, later on. But the overview of some methods and the uh, here, sorry, overview of case studies. Uh, we had some online learning groups as a, as a case, and this was being using some courses which were at the postgraduate uh, level. That's the development of study, development studies, and also multimedia and educational technology courses, which are at postgraduate level. And this was at the University of Agda, and we were using Fronta as LMS uh, by then. And then they blended the distance learning course, which was also an undergraduate business course, which was looked into and this was also done at Mac this one was done at McKinley, but they were using Facebook as a when they were uh, teaching that course. Then there's a MOOC course, which was a, basically a project planning and management course, which was at the University of Agda, but uses the NovEd Nov Nov platform. And then we had the large online courses. Large online courses, actually, they were also MOOC courses, but they had so many uh, more participants, as we shall be able to see. Uh, we have the MOOCs. Uh, these are personal skills. They were in the area of personal skills and they in my Mind Valley, and they were using Facebook and the Mind Valley platform, as we have. And then the Mure courses, which were using the Moodle platform at McKinley. So these are the different cases or the authentic courses that were running in real time so that we can be able to understand what was going on within the, within the system. Then the other thing is uh, about the methods and the data analysis that, that we used uh, just before we go to, okay, good. The, uh, some overview of the methods and the data analysis here. Uh, as you saw that some of the questions we asked uh, in the research questions were asking about uh, the needs uh, in the beginning to understand the needs to create the context. And these first two, we are actually trying to create for us the, the context area. And uh, under the needs, uh, we had a survey which we ran uh, around the uh, Uganda uh, from different regions and uh, from public universities, selected public universities, and all regions were represented, and the private universities in every region, and also uh, these tertiary institutions that were giving diplomas uh, were also selected. And we put run uh, a needs assessment on online learning so that to understand what was going on. We used statistical analysis and the, to analyze the data. This went on for 15 weeks and we were able to come up with some, some publication or output in that line. And then also here, we, we, we looked at the online learning, uh, learning groups. Basically here, we looked at the, 
the courses at the University of Agda by people who have been running uh, courses and using some groups so that we can be able to understand, to get the context and see how we can be able to move on in that. And this used the interviews and observations. And we analyze the data using semantic and interaction analysis. This went on for 12 weeks. Uh, then we also had the, the one where we had observations and interviews for blended distance course. And we used interaction and semantic analysis as well. And it went on for 15 weeks as well. Uh, the MOOC course, we had a survey and some observations that were done. And it was using statistical uh, and semantical analysis that we were able to use. And the, the large online courses also use the observation and you can see uh, the factors in the interviews and focus group discussions. And we also had some scenarios where we had some use cases. And in each of these, we're able to come up with some outputs of uh, publications to, so that we can be able to move to the, to the next step as we were interacting through the system. So I'm now going to, to go through the different results that we, we got from each of these paper in a quite a very, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, picking up a lot of uh, things from there. So here we, well, I have just, in my slides, I've tried to put the, the publications that we were able to insert, like the online learning needs assessment in Uganda, because I know some people may be interested in, uh, in having, in going further and reading in details, because in the presentation, you may not be able to say everything that you, you're supposed to say. Yeah, so here in the needs assessment paper, which is under the context, because we said our presentation is going to be uh, through the such areas, the context, processes, and tools. So under context, we were able to see that there, uh, there was need for implementation of ICT or e-learning policies. That's what the initial thing that we did at, in the, the needs assessment, which showed us that. We also needed things to do with institutionalization of pedagogical ICTs or LMS, because some institutions did not have uh, specific LMS that were running uh, for the institution, but they would do, each of them would have like, someone says, okay, I'm, here, I'm using the cloud thing, I'm using the, the other one, I'm, someone is using Facebook, someone is using something else, and there's no institutional ICT that he drives this. So they, they said they needed something of that kind. There was also a need for improvement of the ICT infrastructure, or, struggling with a lot of infrastructure. People didn't have servers, and you are going to see that uh, uh, issues to do with also the internet connectivity was a little bit problematic, and actually it's still problematic uh, in terms of connection with, with other places, but also there was need for continuous professional development for the staff. We have also seen this in the evaluation we have done at McKinley, that actually people, and one of the things that came out even vividly was that People want to refresh their trainings on the on teaching online, or so that they can be able to be familiar. And also, uh, we also saw facilitating online. So these are the people who wanted to do continuous professional development as the, as needed within there. And the uh, the other thing which looks might look very small is that uh, is the issue they needed connected with the procurement and maintenance of ICTs. Uh, many times they, they were saying that many times uh, in the, in the universities uh, they are not budgeting for for the maintenance of uh, of ICT systems and sometimes you have a system and then it, the system is just going to want to work uh, uh, is going to just go without it will not be maintained and until it will go to get spoiled so like people are saying we need first of all to procure more. ICT infrastructure, but also we need to do something on maintaining what we already we already have, and that's what came out from the from the needs assessment. Uh, and then the the other the other oh sorry I clicked and it was not coming. Okay, the other one is the under context as well, and this was the also supporting learning groups in online learning environments, and they were able to to see here. Some of the, I will just put some of the silent elements uh, for effective learning groups. And the, when we asked the high level professors who were using the, the, the groups then, and 
so that we know exactly what was happening in there. And we, we realized some of the elements that are very key was a course design, which is well set up. And also we get trained online tutors. You need to train people to teach. You need to train because they were telling us that the experience of teaching in a physical environment might not necessarily be the same with the teaching in the, in, the, in the physical environment. So people need to be trained on how to facilitate uh, online so that they can be able to, to teach in an online uh, way. Because when people are in the groups, for example, they need to be maybe provoked, maybe done what so that you encourage the conversation within the groups. Uh, but also the other thing they talked about is motivation and sustaining interactions uh, as a, another silent element that is very important. How do you motivate? How do you sustain this interaction so that you make your conversation grow in a much bigger way? Uh, also high levels of interactions. We're talking about sometimes people are interacting, but they're interacting at maybe the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy and you want them to pitch their conversation up there. And if that is to happen, then the conversation must be done by, by, by the facilitator and therefore he needs the skills to do that. But also the other thing that came out was the peer assessment based activities, uh, designing activities that are really support peer assessment. But um, all also very key was the platform because if you want all these things to be there, but you have a wrong platform, you don't have a, you, you don't have the, uh, you in the system is not usable, doesn't have those functionalities, then it also becomes very difficult for you to, to be able to use the system the way you would like to do. And those two, basically the need assessment and this one gave us the context of the, of the online learning groups. Uh, then we started looking into the processes, having seen uh, that we needed the uh, peer, online peer assessment. So here we had peer assessment based assignment to enhance interactions in online learning groups. So we picked on the peer assessment based assignment and see how to use it here in one of the studies. So in, in here, we developed, uh, we came up with the structuring of the course in a, in a way that would intentionally, intentionally create that kind of conversation or that kind of engagement within the learners. So we set up uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of structure where we have the students in a, we have the students in the groups and in these students uh, work together in a group and were able to submit the work into like sometimes what we refer to as the initial submission. They gave a submission in the beginning to the teacher and then that submission, uh, all the other students in other groups or each of the students was supposed to uh, comment on the other people's initial submissions they have made. And through that, these, conversation, these uh, submissions that each of them has done, if you're in this group, you can't submit in that group, you can submit in the other groups. So we did this and then uh, afterwards the, the students reconvene after the conversation that went on the peer feedbacks they have received, they went on to now work and finalize on, the, on their work and then make the final submission. And because of this uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, of structure or the way we structured this conversation, uh, they we saw that there was enhanced engagement uh, among the learners because where they thought they would just talk briefly, but they continued with, with those conversation in there. We also saw that there was the people who got better motivated because we have already structured this. We have not just taken it for granted that you can just be able to engage without actually creating those intentional structures that allow them to be able to, to converse within the groups. And then we also saw that there was improved quality of peer feedback because uh, there was improved quality of peer feedback that came out from the research and there was also enhanced interactions. So there were more, even if, we, because when somebody uh, comments on your work and is maybe commenting with the, giving you a feedback, then it can cause you to react in the way of uh, creating more conversations. So more interactions happen and students were more engaging and the quality of submissions were really very good at the end of, the, of that. So that's one of the structures that we used for one of the papers to try to increase the kind of engagement within the online 
uh, using this kind of structure to have that. But in, in another paper, which is uh, now, this is learning groups in MOOCs, which was now done because this one was uh, the first one was then done on a MOOC, but this one we wanted to look at the, an environment that is much, much larger, like in terms of, of a MOOC, and we see what happens. And we also created another set of structure, uh, structure, because we have these two structures, the other one, and then this one. In this particular structure, we, we, we actually said, okay, uh, we need to, to have individuals, individual answers. You know, you give students a group activity or a group assignment, and you tell, to be able to start working in your group, you must submit your initial understanding, initial answer to the group. So students here submitted their answers to the group. And the, when they submit the answer to the group, then they can go and start the group activity or processes. But because the students have come into the group, they have now come to the group, to do group activity. They have come in with their own understanding of the problem. Even if they have misfired, but when they come together, the engagement processes become more richer because everyone has come in with some kind of understanding of the of what he thinks this will be like. This is how me my answer is. And sometimes your answer may not be correct totally, but you, you will need an explanation why your answer is not correct. And in those engagement throughout in the group engagement, there will be a lot of learning that will happen. So here, the students were able to submit their group activity after working on it. That means they gave in their answers as individuals. They come here, work together, but the other individual answer is not even assessed. Then they submit their, but it's required. They submit their work, and then the group activity here is handed in. But of course, we would also try to contextualize, like looking at the problem they have brought for the group and contextualize it with the, wherever somebody works. So within your environment, so that you can give an individual answer based on the group activity that we gave. And this was peer assessed on the contextualized individual, uh, individual answers that were given. But of course, as you see, there are peer feedbacks that are happening all throughout and tutor feedbacks that are happening all throughout. And this also uh, showed us uh, in the first place that it is, uh, it's possible for online learning groups. They, we saw possibilities of online learning groups being able to work because we used it in a real authentic environment and it was able to work. We also saw that in the structure, structuring uh, a course, structuring your activities, structuring the group activity in the a, in a right structure will be the one that intentionally brings about those conversations and those interactions. So it's very important to structure that. We also saw that there was better learning outcomes that came out of that because we were able to engage. And motivation also came just like in the first one and understanding also increased. But one other thing that we also saw is that there was individual learning. Individual learning was very, uh, very important. We saw that if individual learning was the was quite quite important because when somebody submits in their work as an individual, and then you come to the conversation, people own up their work in the interaction because they are wondering why their work they submitted was. Uh, in the conversation, they want to also say how they think their work is correct or something like that. So the individualness builds in as they are working in the group. And when you come down here and say, submit your individual work, they will be able to submit. Uh, uh, we have gone through up to this point, and the, I wanted at, that, at this point to, to engage in, an, in a task again, uh, in a task where we are going to uh, have some, some small breakout room, and these breakout rooms are going to be connected with, uh, connected with these structures, these two structures. There's this, the first one, which I have explained, and the second one, which is down there, down here, which you can see. So this is like a task, a uh, group task, but it's going to use breakout room and we are going to spend less time there. So, and the, we are going to base on the two structures and your own experience and answer some of the questions in the discussion as you will be able to, to give us the feed as we have. And we are going, what we are going to have is a, 
to discuss uh, some of the limitations with this kind of things and also uh, but in a, in a point form and then suggest how can them how can they be improved but especially on this on this particular these two t structures and so we but we shall uh, also uh, the answers will be typed in a google doc but the good thing which is going to be shared by irene uh, but the, also the good thing is that the not everybody is going to type because I know not everyone uses Google, but at least in all the groups, there will be one person who uses Google that will be able to do that. And the, the groups are going to be random in nature. And the, I am thinking that I, I should create uh, six groups. Yeah, uh, that looks good. Yeah, that would be good. Six groups, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, in automatically, and so that we can move in there. And the Irene is going to share the is going to share the what? Is going I'm, to share. I'm, <laughs> I'm sharing the link to the Google Doc, uh, uh, which we are going to type in, and I've just done that. And then I'll also be sharing the questions so that you can carry them to the to the group, although they are already in the in the in document the that I've yes yes in the Google Doc yes. Oh, okay. But uh, what we do is uh, there we 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 shall have. There are different rooms. Uh, those who will be in room one uh, will type in the will type in group one in the Google Doc. Maybe perhaps I can uh, I can just uh, do that and then show how the I can show how the Google Doc looks like. It's just there, and then we shall just type the answers in here. For team one, we'll go here. Team two, team three, team four, like that. So I am just going to start the rooms and we are going to be there for only six minutes. Thank you, I'm doing that. Irene, is that okay? Yes, no. yes, of course. Yes, uh, that's okay. perfect. I've also shared the, the discussion points that are going to be there. I can see you are already sending us to the groups. So I will be joining mine and we can share this discussion. Thank you, thank you, Godfrey. Thank you. Okay, I have now sent okay. participants in the groups. Okay, so they just need to, yeah. And now I think we are getting back. Looks like maybe the time was not, uh, uh, was uh, a little bit little, but uh, I can see that uh, many people were, uh, had uh, put on a lot of points and trying to engage with, the, with that. I think the conversation will have to, to remain uh, in there, but you can see that uh, the structures uh, require uh, also require improvements, and also uh, teachers uh, also teachers require to be able to do something. Not only uh, you can't just uh, you don't do a structure, but also we are going to see that the teacher is also quite very vital in ensuring that this works. Uh, because we we are also uh, rushing on time, I will not go through this. But we, since we are all now having access to them, we can just continue with typing in there so that the feeds can be in there. But I'm going to to uh, to, uh, to, to continue with. Sorry, I should have not shared. Okay, I am going now to continue from where we we have been. So already we have looked at the, we are still under processes. We have looked at this task and we have uh, been able to identify some of the limitations and some of the suggestions, uh, most especially uh, when dealing with these uh, groups and ensuring that they are engaging. And because we I had planned shorter, maybe I didn't plan well the activity, but uh, I can continue with the process also where we worked on the other uh, large online course so that we can understand what type of conversations we are going on within the groups. So here we are looking at improving communication in online learning system because they were really very large groups and we're trying to see what we can get out of, out of those large groups. And uh, we looked at the thread partners and online courses. Of course, there are other things we also looked at, but yeah, I just picked up this might be of 
uh, very nice, interesting. We saw that uh, the average messages per thread, the per thread were just five. So because there were three courses that were running, very large courses, that is the uncompromised life, uh, Savannah and duality. Uh, so we were able to see that coming out uh, in this. Uh, you know, we didn't, I didn't, yes, uh, a minute. Okay, look. I would do, I usually I, I, when we get out of the breakout rooms, uh, I just went into the teaching, but I am just going to request that if you are back from the, break, the breakout room, you type one in the chat so that we just know that you're back. Uh, I don't want to be talking alone when we didn't talk. Just type one in the chat, then we can be able to know that you returned from the breakout room. Perfect. So. We all, we all return. I was a little bit scared. No, we are here. We are here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we are here. Also. Yes. Yes, we return. That's good. Uh, so basically, in the large, we looked at the thread partners in the online course of a large uh, class. And we saw that on average, uh, average messages per thread were just five in the uncompromised life. And the, on Salvana, we had the 3.8. And the ones of duality, we had around eight messages. And when you look at the maximum messages in one single thread, uh, we saw that the one we had 83 for uncompromised, but we also had 195 for Savannah. And we, we see that here, uh, uh, 26 for, for duality. And you can see that the average messages per thread, 3.8 3 for uh, Savannah, but here, the highest one is actually very high. It just gives you an uh, indication that when a thread starts, it may just doesn't go on for quite a long time. And here we have also seen uh, down here that the average life of a thread in days is just 2.5, two and a half days, or 1.2, one day, and, and also 1.3 we see on the different platforms that we have. So it tells you that the uh, when you have a thread, when you have a discussion, and you, it will just last for a short time and dies away. And that's why in some of the discussions you were saying that, what would the teacher do to ensure that this conversation can stay in a much longer longer way? So here we have the maximum thread. We're also seeing that in the maximum thread, life in days, we have seen that it's one, the ones with 49 days, we have one with 130 and there's one with 62. Maybe there are certain kind of interactions that are happening that causes those threads to, to grow bigger. Maybe that's where the teacher comes, needs to come in here to provoke the conversations and try to make people more interested and motivated in the conversation. But in general, the average life of a thread is basically more smaller. So that means more discussion you make might be discussed in quite a shorter time. But also when you look at uh, what we had the Pareto uh, principle maintains that 80% of the output from a given situation or system is determined by 20% of the input. And we saw this applied to the messages of this, uh, this MOOC course. Uh, the, because the MOOC course, the number of students are very many and the teachers may not be able to do a lot of, lot of support. Here we saw that 20% of the active participants contributed almost 80% of the total messages that we had. And the others basically didn't do, and didn't have all this, this kind of, uh, of, of conversation in that line. So basically it applied in that principle that actually that's what we had because this was a MOOC and there was no, a lot of this kind of provocations to ensure that people are able to learn. Okay, uh, I, I also see somebody said we have lost many people when they went to the, in the breakout rooms. I hope they are going to return. I hope there was not an error. Yeah, but we hope they are going to, to be able to come. Uh, so basically we, we then uh, also saw here that we, we went ahead to look into the, the interaction messages that were being communicated within the online. We categorized them using uh, some kind of content analysis. 
to try to see what they were talking about within that kind of large MOOC environment. And in the large MOOC environment, we would see that technical problems, the more talk content, we categorize them in shared experience and encouragement. But of course, some of the categorization, you would see that some messages will fit within more than one element, but we would try to uh, align it to one particular, uh, one particular uh, category. So here we can see that the technical problems that we had, we had 26 percent people are asking questions that are technical in nature, and they are receiving answers that are technical in nature. And perhaps maybe when we are just starting for the very first time, uh, when we are running, a, uh, we are going online for the first time, the the amount of questions that are coming from technical side and problem based side may be a little bit higher. But as the, you create support mechanism within the institution, uh, therefore the percentages might be able to, to drop as we go along. But when people are coming in the course for the first time, it's a MOOC and they are not familiar with the environment, then the technical questions will be much higher. We saw that coming out. And the small talk, things of introductions, welcomes and thanks, we are contributing 29% of, the, of the, the communication that we are doing. And content itself, content was actually contributing only 10%, the content area. And just because these are MOOCs and maybe there were not a lot of provocations within these areas that they want. But sharing experience uh, was 16%. And then encouragement and the, the encouragement processes were able to have around 11%. And this was the uh, categorization in one of, the, of these papers that we developed in that area. Uh, then the other, the other uh, paper, which was also under the tools towards technology for supporting effective one -on -one groups, were actually trying to come up with factors, factors that will support uh, effective online learning groups. And in here, we in here we see that uh, we 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 because we used. The, the, the processes we use the what we had in the context to actually try to come up with the something of this kind uh, to develop uh, some kind of what are the elements that we need for us to have something that is more effective and we saw that uh, sometimes the uh, when you are dealing with groups eh, and the, 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 the learners engage more within the when you give them activities that require them to engage more, and yet there are no supporting policies uh, within the institution that enable that to, to happen, where they are saying that the final exam is carrying 80%, and then the, the, the engagement within the online is taking 20%. So the, the learners really, there would be a contradiction in that kind of, of setup. So we thought that uh, there would be supporting online learning group institutional policies it would be able to enable that kind of, of mechanism. But also, we also saw that there was need for supporting online learning group institutional technologies. Technologies not to just have multiple technologies, but when you don't have one where you, you rely on like different universities I have seen uh, have institutional technologies. And if, even those who, had, who didn't have, uh, because of COVID, I think many have now, developed some kind of institutional technologies that they are using. And those institutional technologies that you, you are using should have, to, should have, should afford, create some affordances for you to be able to support the learners when working in these types of groups in a way. And then the, the other thing is the quality of online learning groups, activities. Uh, you need to set up a nice activity because an activity that has kind of structure that will enable some conversation and you intentionally set up this activity to enable uh, conversation, but you link such activities to the, the intended learning outcomes so that you can be able to, uh, to get a good output, uh, outcome from the, from the learners. But also we, we thought it, uh, the quality of online learning group itself, the group itself uh, should, do, should also be taken into consideration. What is the composition of this group? Uh, who should be there, how long it should be uh, running. So basically that was also something that we looked at, but also looked at the quality of online 
group facilitation. And this is something that we saw in, the, in our group discussions, which was also coming out where we're saying that, where is the facilitator? Because when the group activity is going on and the facilitator is not there, and when things are going wrong and the facilitator is not saying anything, or the facilitator is not provoking learners, or is not ensuring that it motivates learners, uh, follow up learners who have some problem, then it becomes a little bit problematic in what we, we have. Uh, then, uh, then we, yes. So I am going to talk about a little bit in the, uh, in, in the quality of online learning group activity and also the facilitation part. So in the, in the group activity, we, we realized that it was very key in terms of structuring the activity was very key. Uh, a structured activity that enables interactions that intentionally puts possibilities of conversation, not just telling people to work in a group, but you don't structure it to enable that kind of things to happen. And then connected the, the activity, the group activity should be connected to the learning outcomes very clearly so that it comes out. Uh, we also enable peer feedback and assessment possibilities sometimes in the activity. Uh, we also think about rewards. The rewards may not only be marks, but uh, some kind of rewards to motivate people to be able to continue interacting within the group activities. But also we saw that facilitator feedback and assessment, timely facilitator feedback and assessment is also very key to enable, this, uh, to enable the learners to work perfectly well within, within the groups. But in the in also in the facilitators area, we 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 saw that there was need to provide the sense of teacher presence. Like when you have an online course, but the teacher doesn't exist anywhere, and the students feel that you don't, you are not there, then conversation doesn't make a lot of uh, a lot of sense. And many times, uh, we have seen now, like for us here in Makerere University, where someone is having a class and is teaching alone and is teaching like 300 students online. It becomes, your, the presence, your presence becomes really a little bit minimal in trying to guide and scaffold the other learners. So we had thought that it would be more appropriate maybe if you had online tutors or facilitators where they have like only 25 online learners. But of course, you can even have two learners, but you don't appear there in the conversation. Of course, it becomes very bad, but at least not to be overwhelmed by work. If you have, you can go up 25, it becomes a little bit easier for that. You know, the facilitation. So the other thing we looked at, we also uh, got within the facilitator area was the increased motivation where we, we expected the facilitator to, to do some rewards uh, given to the group work that they are doing, maybe by, by uh, telling them how uh, some uh, budgets or giving them some kind of marks, like then they will be able to see that, okay, these activities that are group are very good. And the cost goals and objectives are clearly stated so the learners will be able to understand clearly uh, so that they can be motivated. So it will increase their motive. And then positive feedbacks are given during the group interaction. So like when you go in the conversation, you are following up because if you have fewer students, you can be able to intervene and give some positive feedback and so that they, you boost their motivation and interaction so that it can sustain the conversation within the groups that they have. Then the other thing is increasing group interactions. You can also apply questioning, provoke learners to interact so that when people are interacting at the lower, lower levels of uh, Bloom's taxonomy, you can be able to, to boost and uh, ask questions within, within there which can be able to provoke learners and converse at a, a higher pitch. Of, 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 Bloom's, uh, of, of Bloom's taxonomy. So here, we, after we went through this, uh, we got the, these factors and we understood that these are things that we want from the factors. We went ahead and used the factors uh, in, a, in a real uh, system, but we were able to create some designs. Uh, we designed uh, some scenarios. Uh, through scenarios, we use scenario based where we, we developed, I had just put summaries and then I um, just also uh, bolded the, the use cases that were coming out from the conversation. The first thing that creates a group activity, the members discuss and find solution. So we're trying to get some of those create, discuss, submit, construct, assess, discuss, mediate. And this helped us in the coming up with the, 
with use cases where we have in like in part A, where the facilitator can create, the facilitator can assess, the facilitator has the, the affordance of mediating, uh, but also here we can see that the learner can assess, the peer assessment, the learner can comment. So we created this kind of conversation in there. Uh, but also here we in the in the discussion or in the mediation processes, we also went ahead and looked at the different use cases uh, where learners can post, another learner can view, can reply, can be able to, to delete, the facilitator can be able to delete, and facilitator can view, select, or and can be able to send so that they can be able to get such information. So we're able to, to come up with the, that kind of, of design, which we used up, uh, we used in the in a, in a Moodle environment. Okay, uh, then in a, in a summary form. Okay, sorry. I, uh, so uh, in a summary form, we actually were able to establish uh, some of the methods for better creation of online learning groups, like basically in terms of size, what we, we saw it would be more appropriate to run Two to two and seven, maybe between two and seven as a group, so that you don't have a very large group to deal with, and also a diversity within a group, levels of experience, backgrounds, uh, differences in age and gender should also be taken into consideration when you're creating uh, those groups. Group members should be kept in the same groups for a longer period of time to allow for group dy uh, dynamics, because sometimes these uh, when you give students for a very short time, there are conflicts that happen in there. But uh, we would do, recommend that if you have a course that's running for full semester, you would give students in the same group from the start of the semester to the, to the end of the semester. Then that will be able to create that uh, cohesion comes out very clearly in the group, in the group question. The other thing was the uh, structuring of online learning group activities. And here we saw that the, the activity should be connected to the course learning outcomes, very clearly set. The purpose of the group activity should be stated clearly and concisely to motivate the learners and so that the learners can be able to, to interact in the, in the conversation. And then the, the other thing is a structured for peer feedback and assessment. So you need to structure it to allow for uh, this kind of uh, peer feedback and also assessment process. Uh, and also enable facilitator assessment so that they can be able to, to engage in the conversation in that line. Then the other one would, would be to, for the facilitators, basically, uh, of course, one thing we saw that you don't need to, uh, a method, uh, if you want to facilitate online, you don't need to just facilitate once and you are done. It would make more meaning if you did facilitation for, for like three cohorts and you acquired some experience you become much better into how you deal with the online facilitation and you make it in a much, a much better way. Uh, learner guidance and scaffolding was very key for in the facilitation processes. Facilitator presence was also talked about. Uh, timely feedback and assessment was also very, very key. Uh, motivation and sustaining uh, learning interactions, motivating and encouraging learners was, was very, very important uh, in this other factor. But also we, we had the factors which we have already mentioned, supporting institutional policy, supporting uh, institutional technology, quality of online learning group activity, quality of online learning groups, quality of online learning group facilitation. So we have this in the diagram, maybe I will show it again. So that gives us that uh, kind of thing. So in a, in, a, in a summary, this is what we had, the method for better creation of online groups, method for better structuring of online groups, and method for better facilitation of online groups, and then the factors for supporting effective online learning groups. Yeah, so basically those are the ones that we were able to see. And the, then we also came up with some future directions that we would be able to, uh, to use. I, I brought it a little bit earlier than the summary, but we, we saw that in here, uh, informal learning groups were uh, need to be studied a little bit in, in a deeper way because we, we have seen that students are going, creating their own WhatsApp group, creating their informal 
informal groups that they have. So we need to look uh, into how did these groups influence learning within this uh, setting. So we thought that that would be a good direction to look into as well. But also we thought that looking into deep learning, like need to look into the interaction patterns, which kind of patterns are going on, how they influence the learning and interaction. What are people saying? How, what conversations are going into in details to understand this so that you can see when a student says something here, it can show you how it will influence the learning processes. Then the other thing was the usability and user experience studies so that we can improve the, the, learning, the, the, the learning environment so that the, the group work can easily be done with ease so that we don't have those three of saying, no, this one can't be done. And then the other one can be, can be done. Yes. Uh, then uh, we, in summary, in a, in a summary way, we have realized, we, we saw that uh, there was some kind of small challenge or challenge with, this was the problem that we had for online groups. And we used the, uh, we, we, the study adopted the design science methodology and mixed methods approach and case studies of online learning courses that we used. And then the research areas, we, we used three research areas where we looked at the context, we looked at processes, and we also looked at tools. Uh, and then we were able to establish methods and factors for that were creation of online learning groups, structuring of online learning groups, activities, and then facilitation of online learning groups. But also we, we came up with some factors, which we are seeing here. Uh, so we came up with some factors, which we are seeing here. I'm not going to read them again, uh, but in a nutshell, COVID, uh, I just put this at the end, COVID has further exposed the relevance of this study. I don't know whether, yes. I think that's, a, that's my presentation. And I think at this point, I know we don't have a lot of time, but uh, I have one task, but I would ask the, Irene, if there is anyone who has some questions before we do the last task. Uh, there was, yeah, thank you. There, there was a conversation about losing people um, after breakout room or that movement that we do after breakout room. And mm -hmm. Karen says, it's always a pity when we lose colleagues. I wonder if it, uh, the same occurs in a virtual classroom. And she's lucky because she always has smaller groups. And I think, yeah, but she's from Estratini. So, and then Diana says, yes, we just lose their concentration instead. So there, there was that com uh, uh, conversation there. Keith from South Africa says, from a high school perspective, there seems to be a category of students that take two or prefer online learning. So I, I, I think that was a comment as you presented that came from Keith. So those were the things that happened in the chat while you are presenting. Thank you, and back to you. Okay, thank thank you, Irene. I think uh, when we came back to from the from the groups, when we came back from the groups, the breakout sessions, uh, I should have uh, maybe brought back uh, the the groups to present what they have done in the normal sessions. You would say, "Can you tell us what you have discussed within the group?" But because we didn't have uh, a lot of time, and therefore, when somebody says the concentration goes down, but when you connect it directly from the group to what has been happening in the group here, maybe the conversation can continue and the concentration will be will be much higher. I appreciate what uh, uh, everyone has given uh, about high school, about about this group thing, and actually, it's very very vital. And now I. If there are not any other questions, I would know, I would also like to, to give the last task. <laughs> okay, can I give the last task? Irene? Yeah, okay. yes, yes. Because yes. Uh, we are coming to the end. <laughs> we, we are sorry yes. we have gone slightly more than the hour we said, but we just have the task that I'm going to give you. And this is also going to be in Menti, and we're just asking you to mention any three concepts or things you have learned in this in this workshop. Basically, I would do, I would just uh, 
I would just go to Menti. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't pick this. Um, So meanwhile, Irene, you can let me just as I pick this up, you can. We have we have somewhere who says, would I be wrong? Uh, let me read that. Sorry. Would I be wrong to say feedback or quality and timeliness is probably the most important factor in the effectiveness of OLGs? And. Uh, Karen has to leave, so bye. Thank you, Karen, for being here. So as we go to Menti, I believe we are using the same code. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm using a different code. Okay then. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm going to. Okay. I don't, if they do, you can see my network is is not moving as fast <laughs> as as yours. No problem. Perhaps, perhaps Godfrey, you have quite a number of uh, windows open. You might want to shut down some of them so that uh, your connectivity is not competing with a lot of things. That oh, is yeah. usually a trick that, that I use mostly where I close down most of them, yes. And then you're okay. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So basically, yes. the, uh, the, the, I am just using uh, the code that I'm going to use is a 17. Let me just... Be... 1769310. 69310. And you also okay. still go to menti, uh, menti.com, www.menti.com, uh, and then you put in that code, and you'll be able to uh, tell us what you have been able to, to fix from here. Yes, and I also agree with Irene that, that learner feedback is very key. So for having a, a timely feedbacks are very key. Yeah, as, as they, they have mentioned, for having an effective learning group. group. Uh, um, okay, other, I can see someone has said learner feedback. Are people finding problems using the mentee? Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has issues, please let us know. You need to go to menti.com, then enter the, the code that has been provided. Mm. Yes, we will, we will share the recording. In fact, it is on YouTube already. Um, and uh, we will share the recording. Um, so you'll, you'll have a possibility of reviewing everything that we've discussed, yes. Thank you, Saya, for asking. Okay, I can see at least I have some feed, and it tells me that at least somebody has been uh, able to pick up something. And uh, I know some more people can be able. If you can't submit on Menti, you can also clearly submit it in under. You can just write it in the chat, and it can be picked up as well there. But you can see the kind of submission we have got is the. We have uh, enhanced learning, this teacher presence, and we are seeing collaboration, rewards, learner feedback, clear activities, timely feedback, effective communication, informal learner, group, learn, learner groups, confirm the palatable in the online learning groups, um, user experience, uh, learn activity. So basically, there are, there are many feeds in there, but you can continue with the, with the, with those uh, feeds as we we just. Uh, this is my contact. I have. Uh, this is my contact and those are the, as those are my emails. Uh, someone is. Uh, Or I had to, uh, to mute someone who was by mistake had left his mic on. So basically, and uh, I also want to recognize uh, Image Africa, uh, Macquarie University, University of Baghdad, Norad. 
uh, it was this uh, work was sponsored by NORAD and we worked on it through the University of Agda and the Makerere University and image provided the opportunity to be able to present today at this point. Thank you very much. I think that's all, Irene, over to you. Oh, what to say? Thank you so much, Dr. Godfrey Mayende. We appreciate you. We had a great time. We learned a lot. We enjoyed ourselves. And I think we also learned uh, a few things in using Menti and also breakout rooms. So thank you for the session. We appreciate it. And we have the recording, which will be uh, in YouTube. We'll share it in our YouTube channel. And we are also sharing it in Facebook um, where, the, where we shared the event. So we will have everything for you. Thank you for joining us from Houston, from anywhere uh, around the world. We are very, very happy to have you. So um, have a good afternoon, good day, and we will see you another time. Bye for now. Oh, bye. Bye, all of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mm. everyone. Bye, everyone. So long. Bye, from South Africa. Bye, everyone from Egypt. Bye, Mo. Bye, Mohammed. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Tendai. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. And bye. See you uh, in another webinar. We'll be having some more soon. Be sharing them with you. All right. Just one thing, Irene. On the yes, YouTube, on the YouTube, uh, what is the name of your channel? It's Image Africa. Image Africa. Yeah, just Image Africa. Yes, that's the YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, but, all right, we, okay. but first, what we do is we usually take it and edit a little bit to, to remove whatever is not necessary, and then we add it there. However, if you go into Facebook now, you'll find it there running, and you can also use that. All right, okay. Yeah, yes. All right, all right. thank you so much. Yeah, this, uh, I can share with you the one that we were sharing just now. It's in the chat. The, the YouTube channel that we were sharing it with just now. So you can still use that one for now. <laughs>